G'day guys, my name's Ben and welcome to Medieval Mayhem on this channel. You'll find lots of reviews into other people's gear. You'll find lots of DIY videos into costuming and furniture and today we're going to make a pair of medieval breeches. These would be suitable for the Dark Ages, post-Roman period, roughly sort of 5th, 6th century onwards through to thereabouts of like 9th, 10th century. What men wore as trousers varied greatly depending on cultural region, time period and also um, religious influences and those sorts of things. Um, this particular pair of trousers is going to be heavily influenced by the Thorsborg find which was uh, a pair of trousers retrieved from a German bulk roughly what 150 years ago thereabouts um, in the 19th century anyway. Several historians have tried to make patterns based on that uh, find, however there are significant variations between them. So it's very difficult to sort of argue well this particular one is right when the actual historians who've seen the real item uh, disagree on exactly how that would work. My pair of trousers today is, is not going to be 100% based on any of those patterns, it's much more going to be based around um, uh, what I think would work and before we get into the actual making of the garment we need to take a few measurements. Now the first measurement is going to be uh, your upper thigh. Uh, you need your waist, you need uh, ideally above the knee and below the knee and lastly you need your ankle measurement. Trousers of this time appear to have been relatively close fitting but not crazy close fitting. So they would have been uh, loose enough to allow people to do their, their work and their function but um, not excessive in terms of the amount of fabric used. Now we also know that um, in, in this, later in this period we start to see the evolution of the rusk pants and those sort of balloon type pants that you often see uh, depicted with Vikings. Um, so as I say um, there simply hasn't been enough of these finds to conclusively say uh, that this was a popular or common garment of the particular time period and historians even argue as to whether or not seams would be on the rear or on the side of the leg so uh, it's, it's very difficult to actually get something which is going to be historically accurate because I don't think we have enough evidence to suggest that anything was commonplace or whatever. Uh, already now the last measurement we're going to need is the length so uh, medieval trousers of this particular time period were quite high waisted um, far more so than what we find today bear this in mind when you're wearing them um, uh, when my son first started wearing uh, medieval pants he just really couldn't get his head around it it was just like uh, but there we go um, already once we've got those measurements, we can start putting something together. Uh, Alrighty, so the pattern that I'm working off looks something like this. Now, you have two legs that look like this, radio. This is a single piece of fabric, and um, this wraps around the leg. We have the length of the trouser down here. We have the ankle measurement. We have the uh, above and below knee, and then we have the thigh circumference. Uh, this piece of fabric then comes round behind the leg and onto the inner thigh joining this gusset here. You then have the other leg pattern here. This particular pair of trousers, uh, the find also features a uh, waistband with belt loops which is quite interesting. That's much more of a, what most people would assume is a modern feature. but. Um, uh, here we go, it's on, on this particular find from, uh, I can't actually remember exactly the date that the Thosbok find uh, relates to, but it's quite early in the medieval period. Radio. now I'm not going to make um, the foot sections, um, I, I just don't necessarily see that we have to. Uh, I realise the original find did have them. Um, but I'm not going to include them on my particular one. Next question uh, obviously also is fabric. Now um, the original find was made out of a wool twill 
and wool would have been very common. Wool is also a stretchy kind of fabric or at least has some stretch to it. Um, I live in Australia and wool would not be overly suitable for at least the vast majority of the year so I'm going to use a linen uh, which is much more breathable and uh, also still quite you know um, relevant to the time period. Alrighty let's see if we can draw this out. Uh, so we've got two legs cut out like so and we've also got a gusset piece that looks like this. Um, there's not a whole lot of seams and there's not a whole lot of work to do. It's really just trying to calculate the, uh, the dimensions. Once you've got those, once you're fairly confident with those, the rest of it will come together relatively straightforward. So um, if you're going to have a crack at something like this, and I, and I really do suggest you, you give it a go, um, I, I think this is a good, a good project to do for anyone who really who's into LARP or SCA or medieval reenactment because uh, a lot of the modern alternatives really just don't look the part uh, and this just isn't that hard. It's cost me about $20 or something worth of fabrics um, and it's going to take me I reckon maybe an hour or so with the worth of time of sewing. So not that much really. You could probably buy something like this commercially but I imagine the cost would be fairly significant. Anyway there we go, let's give it a crack. I'm just starting with the legs. Uh, Sometimes it's easy to get to make two left legs or two right legs or something and same same with sleeves. Sometimes it can be really useful just to use a piece of pattern chalk and write L and R on it just so you don't get stuff confused. Uh, otherwise you're going to end up wasting a whole lot of time. You don't need to. And it's so frustrating having to unpick seams. I hate it. Alrighty guys, we're done. And apart from the modern trainers, um, pretty not too bad. Uh, I would have preferred they to come out a bit higher waist. So they're sitting maybe five inches or 12 centimeters lower than what I wanted them to. Uh, that's probably a little bit of practice on that. And uh, first time I've ever made, first time I've ever gone and made um, some Viking style trousers. But there we go, um, hopefully I'll be getting out some Viking style um, or some Dark Age type uh, shoes in the next couple of weeks. Uh, that's my probably my next sort of really big project to do. Lots of other projects coming out soon and some really good ones coming out next week, can't wait. But uh, there we go, seems to have come out alright. All the seams are on the inside, it, it looks pretty reasonable. Um, can bend and flex pretty well. So generally speaking, you know, really quite quite happy with the the end result. Um, but as I say, could have been a bit higher wasted. Uh, so I'll have to have a um, another think about that pattern before I use them too much. It was a fun little project this morning. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll catch you in my next video.